Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another War of the Visions video, and welcome to part one of the Should You Pull Swimsuit Edition. And we're going to talk about Swimsuit Lilith. Swimsuit Lilith, who's looking real good over there on my left. We're going to look at her stats, skills, pros and cons, TMR, the whole nine yards. We're going to see if you should pull her or if you should continue to stay strong for Final Fantasy VII. My stay strong people, remember that hashtag, stay strong. Everybody else, let's go look at this video. So first things first, if you need some Vizior to pick up Swimsuit, Lilith, Swimsuit, whoever, please consider using my Amazon coin affiliate link. It's located down in the description. Best way to support this channel. And let's talk about the unit. Okay, first, let's go with some stat checks and some basic stuff. First of all, the master ability. We need to talk about the master ability with Swimsuit Lilith. There you see it on the screen. It upgrades one of her passive skills that we'll look more at here in a minute. And it gives her a 10% agility buff. That agility buff is nice, but the question is, will she get the party buff in global with her EX or not? Will she get that HP and earth attack up buff that like newer units are getting or will she be stuck in the past like she is in JP without that buff? That's a big thing, right? That's a nice buff for a group. More HP, more earth attack. That's huge. So we'll see if she gets that or if she does not. Next, let's take a quick look at her TMR because some units are worth leveling just to 99 only for the TMR. Is hers that good? Well. It's some sunglasses, which makes sense. If you see the picture up there, she's kind of like rocking them on her head. Anyway, they're an accessory with 288 HP, 15 accuracy, and 10 crit rate. That's a pretty good stat line for like an accuracy accessory. The skill on it is really, really interesting. So, it's a self buff for one turn that increases range by 2 and attack by 40%. I don't love this buff. Now, there's some really fun like uses for it say you're running a weird like auto attack only charm setup with like fina's bow and so turn one you want your unit popping this tmr and turn two they're just dropping charm auto attacks and then by turn three they'll be in range to keep dropping them i could see it used for something weird like that or as kind of a cool mechanic to keep a unit in the back line uh, for a turn because they're already in range to do damage, letting your tanks go forward, something like that. However, I do not think it is a good TMR for Lilith here, and I'm going to talk more about that later. And it's basically just because this chick needs bells. Okay, that was that. Now let's look at her actual stat lines, and I'm going to put the level 99, 115, and 120 stats on the screen so we can see, like, is it worth taking her to a certain break point? Is it worth taking her all the way? Here we go. At level 99, you can see her HP is pretty low, 2200, and her attack at 319 is kind of iffy. She also has 61 agility at that level, 265 dex, 193 luck, uh, move 3, jump 2. Okay, that's that would have been good like a year ago when she would have been like a strong level 99 unit. However, we're li we live in the present day, so let's look more at the 115 and 120 stats. At 115, she gets a nice jump to 2600 HP and 392 attack. Her agility stays the same, and she gets a big bump in dexterity. If you take that even further to level 120, the HP goes up by almost the same amount again to over 3000. That's really nice. It's going to help her be more survivable, which is actually kind of a core part of her kit. Her attack goes up to 416. I really like that number. It's not a huge jump in attack from 115 to 120, but 416 does look better than 392. Also note, she picks up three more agility. Her agility goes up to 64, which makes her a pretty fast unit, and I really like that. At 328 dexterity, she's not going to have a problem hitting things, which she's not going to have a problem hitting things. That's another theme of this unit. Um, and 227 luck. Okay, let's quickly look at her resistances and then talk about where you want to build her to. She's weak to slash. You hate to see that. You hate to see anybody who's weak to slash because there's so much slash in the game, so that's an oof. However, she is strong to piercing and also weak to magic. So the two most prevalent damage types in the game, she is weak to slashing and magic. You're going to need this girl to be covered by a tank in a lot of situations or rely on the rest of her kit to keep her alive. Again, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, I think you should take this unit to 120 
if you're going to go for her. She's a unit that's meant to kill things. I think if you're talking about a damage dealing unit, you just want to really overload those stats. Sometimes you can get away with a tank or a support at less than 120 because they can still do their job just fine. I really think you're going to want her at 120 for that extra HP for that extra attack and for that extra agility so that's my recommendation there note as well that she's very strong against lightning and weak against wind so with charlotte and cloud around the corner that's something else to kind of think about okay so there's her stats let's go now to look at some of her skills all right let's start the skill checks by looking at her support abilities and there's a couple things we need to shout out here including a big trap on this list now to start her top one is range and accuracy buff that gets added to it a defense plus 12 buff and 15% missile resistance buff. This makes it pretty good. Like more range on your missile units is a good thing, especially for somebody who's weak to slashing and magic. This increase in range will help her separate from her tanks and I really like that. Add on to that the defense and missile resist buff and it's pretty good, right? Let her let her survive a barrage from Frederica maybe two times plus with that lightning resistance and this missile resistance. That's a really nice upgrade, and I like it. The next one is a double gunner, increased missile attack plus 15 buff. I actually really like that honor, and I'm going to tell you why. The one after it is an attack skill activation down buff with 12 missile attack. Now, if you're just looking at those for what they are, you might think you're getting more value out of the um, third buff on this list, the activation time down with 12 missile attack, then you would be from just the flat 15 missile attack from the second one. That's wrong on this unit. She actually doesn't mess with many activation times, especially with her EX upgrade. It removes an activation time from one of her core abilities. So you're not actually getting anything out of that activation time reduction. And it's better if you're gonna run missile attack to just run the flat 15. So keep that in mind. Then, if you want to make her even more survivable, you can get 12 more defense and 12% more HP from Paladin. Stacking that with that first buff is a nice HP jump for her. And then my favorite one on this list is the Double Gunner Agility Up and Defense Penetration Up 40. Man, do I like that buff. I love that support ability. I'm going to be running that mixed with one of those other good ones. Okay, counter abilities. Not a whole lot to talk about here because she has Reflex. So just run Reflex. It's a magical and physic re physical reflex, so you just dodge everything. You gotta love it. Run reflex all the time. Okay, how about her main job skills? Let's take a look at those. Now, she has just like regular charge. This ends up being her only skill with a cast time on it, and who cares? Because you don't want her to use that anyway. Okay, she has a poison range attack. She has an immobilized range attack. I don't love either of those. Let's keep moving. Now, she has supercharge, right? That's what this is. 220% damage with a cast time on it. It gets upgraded, which removes the cast time and adds a 30% life steal to the ability. This makes supercharge really good. It also makes it cost less, which is a big deal for this unit. It goes from 28 AP to 22 AP, and I really like this skill on her. She's maybe the first unit in the game that I like supercharge on as an ability. However, she might not be using it very much because her next skill is so good. Okay, Barrage gets upgraded to a 100% hit chance. It has the same gigantic AoE it had before, but now a 100% hit chance. So, Evasion teams, look out because you're all going to get hit by this Barrage. That's really good. The drawback here is it still costs 45 AP. That's steep, you guys. 45 AP is a lot. So, you already got to be thinking, bells on this girl, if you want to run her as a big time anti-evasion AoE spammer. Then, her job level 25 ability decreases the defense of the target by 30 for one turn, and then deals 165% damage, and then increases her defense by 15. That order is important, and note that it hits in this AoE. So, let's talk about that. Decreasing the defense first will make this ability do more damage. It might make the ability do more damage than even supercharge, which scales at 220%. We'll see, right? It also hits in an AoE, which means sometimes the AI would prioritize using it anyway, so that defense down is really nice. Then giving her 15 more defense, that stacks really well with her support abilities. And before you know it, this could be a unit who's rocking like 60, 70 defense as a ranger making her pretty survivable. So I really like that skill. 
Um, and that, that it's a three turn defense buff for her is nice. Uh, that it's only a one turn defense debuff. Maybe it'll only affect her attack, but it will affect it in a big way. Okay, her ranger sub job. Um, you actually see her first self buff right here coming in in a ranger sub job, and it's not super good. It's a 55 evasion buff for one turn that decreases all her resistances by a bunch for that same turn. I don't like that skill. She also has access to regular sharpshoot, and then just like another regular charging attack does 185% damage. You're probably not going to run ranger sub very often. Double gunner sub job. Now this one gets really interesting. This adds a bunch of like more AOE hits to her attack. Like you know this one with the weird the weird shaped AOE that like uh, Venera will do. She's got the stun attack that costs TP. She's got the big like spreading AOE attack. And then she has um, the four hit attack. This will be great for PvE. So immediately, when, whenever you see this, you can say, aha, this will be a good unit for PvE chaining, a good unit for clearing those pesky missions um, that are like, build a chain of three. She can do that all by herself with that. Elemental or just regular chain, she can do it. Really like this sub job, especially for PvE. Now, Paladin sub job. I think this is her most important sub job for PvP. And let's talk about why. Uh, it has everything to do with this. <laughs> 200% chance to ignore fatal damage for self one time. This is the courage buff, right? This is the thing that paladins have that stops them from dying one time. So in conjunction with all of her re raising defense things, you could also run this. And the AI is going to use it. Because if you go back up to her main job here, let's go look at this. There's no buffs in here. You must get your buffs from either TMRs or your sub job. So... I think the best setup for her is Bells plus this, plus the Courage buff. That will give her the AP she needs and another way of surviving damage in case she gets slapped by a Black Rose Helena AoE or some physical units burn her down. It also has Sentinel, which is a pretty good buff if she's just not, you know, ready to shoot yet. The rest of this Paladin sub job is kind of meh. It's pretty standard stuff. Um, no shield. Notice she does not get the 50% shield. If she'd have got that, I'd been like, my god, she's one of the best anti-physical units in the game. Still, she's very good anti-physical unit. Then her limit break decreases missile resistance by 38% for three turns for the target. Single target, but that's a nice debuff. Then 200% damage, and it will inflict immobilize for three turns. That's pretty good, um, but at 49 AP, that's a very, very steep cost. Okay, now let's go on to talk about the, um, the pros and cons of this unit and should you pull. Okay, let's start with the good stuff, the pros. Um, she's going to be a super good anti-evade unit. If you need somebody to be an evasion killer, I mean, here's your girl. She's going to do that job super well. Her paladin sub job gives her a lot of survivability with courage and sentinel. I really like this, like, ranged unit with paladin sub thing like Winter Victoria has. I wish she had the shield from paladin sub, but she doesn't. Still, courage combined with all her defense is super nice. Then... Earth has access to the Titan Vision card, which will mix in really well with other Earth friends. Like, this girl's surprisingly a good, uh, a good person to run with, like, Prince Mont. Think about, like, a Prince Mont, uh, swimsuit Lilith Frederica team that's running Titan Vision card, Frederica's dream on Frederica, and then Mont's running, like, you know, whatever he wants, and Mont's throwing rocks and just pounding people with rock throws. Uh, that's a fun team comp right there. Now, she's going to pair really well with, like, Zazan. Any team that wants to use Titan in their kit, that can also open up those evasion options with Zazan and Katone and her, for example. So keep that in mind. Now, the cons. She almost 100% needs Bells. Like, her moves are very expensive. Her main job has no big TP buffs or anything. So you're going to want her popping Bells on her first turn almost all the time. Or at least Bells and Courage on her first couple of turns. And then just open up on the enemy team. So that is a bit of a con. Her main job lacks any buffs. We just talked about that. And the Stay Strong thing. She's a limited time unit. And Final Fantasy VII is just around the corner. Now we haven't seen the banners yet. Last time we got older um, limited units. We got pretty good banners. So maybe we'll just get hooked up with very cheap easy ways to get them. I wouldn't necessarily count on that though. Because... This is a big event, right? The summer events, the summer units, these are a big deal. People like to collect these summer units. And so I don't know that we'll get like super hooked up here. So if you're a stay strong person, 
Hashtag stay strong. Stay strong. Cloud, right around the corner. Tifa, Aerith, Barrett, right around the corner. If you're going for some summer units, I think my like overarching piece of advice on should you pull for these units is um, maybe pick your favorite one, right? If you're not going to pull at all, don't even worry about this. If you're thinking about pulling, maybe go for like one of them. And remember, Swimsuit Kill Fae might be next week, might be right around the corner, right before Final Fantasy VII, might be after Final Fantasy VII. So keep all of those things in mind, look at your own Vizior, and make that choice for yourself. I will be going for Swimsuit Lilith, because she's an Earth unit, y'all know Earth is my main element, so I'm definitely going for her. Haven't made up my mind on the rest of the summer units yet, and I might wait until next week to see next Monday's news before I decide on the rest of them. Okay, this set for part, that is it excuse me, for part one. I'm signing off here. I'll see you in the next video, which is going to talk about Swimsuit Ketone. Peace.